I, I like to see what each t apple tastes like, and then you can really tell the vintages from year to year. Hey, 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 my name is Rhea Wincoller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. Bringing us into this here episode talking about making single varietal ciders so that you could really taste that specific apple to see what it reveals was Bill Storm of Storm Ranch Cider and Wine, based in Julian, California. And in this week's episode, our guests are both Bill and Pauline Storm. I actually was at the cidery this past October, and I'm following up from my trip to Julian, California, where this is located, along with Calico Cidery last week, where I was speaking to Ian Wright. So you could check that out on episode 300. And 47. This week we're on 348, episode 348. So that means we're two episodes away from the 350th episode of Cider Chat. Let's party. Okay, men, Lars. Okay, we're going to start partying. <laughs> Are you bringing in the wild yeast right now? Uh -huh. oh, well, uh, how about if we take them out of the cider house while we're recording? Because, you know, they could be a little bit of a distraction. And we're not quite at the 350th episode yet. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're... <laughs> We're going to be having a little bit of a party, as we do for all our, like, banner episodes every time we hit that 50th new episode. In this case, it's going to be the 350th episode. Hooray! <laughs> okay, Palms, I could tell that you're really excited for the 350th episode. Uh -huh. And I also get a sense that maybe you've been inviting some of your friends over earlier to prepare. Maybe, yeah. Maybe no. Oh, okay, yeah. I know that maybe yes, maybe no from the Medlars. That tells me everything. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. Anyways, uh, look, for those folks who are listening to Cider Chat for the first time, before we go on, you are hearing both myself and the Talking Palms. We have the Medlars. Hello. And Mr. Quince. <laughs> hello. And Perry Pear. Yes, yes, hello. I am Perry Pear. And they, along with all their friends, are known as the Talking Palms. So we do have Talking Palms uh, in the Cider House pretty much 24-7. <clears throat> and we always have Wild East here to Rhea. Okay, okay, I get the point. Uh, can you guys just keep it down a little bit? Thank you. They are a lot of fun. That's true, Perry Pear, and we're going to be talking to the folks at Storm Ranch Cider and Wine about their wild yeast ferments, but they also use a cultured yeast, too, so there's a time for, well, every yeast, isn't there? Roger that, Rhea. Shall we move on? Yes, Mr. Quince, let's move on. With Ambrosia Borowski, the founder of Chicago Cider Week, the executive director of the Northman Beer and Cider Garden and newly opened Green Post Pub, and director of cider operations at the Northman Cider Company. Now, Ambrosia and I are talking about the upcoming trade conference called CiderCon, which is put on by the American Cider Association. You want to go to ciderassociation.org to find out more details. And what we are talking about here are the kickoff events. So you want to be looking at that week of January, the tail end of January. So we're looking at January 29th through really February 4th and the cider tours that are taking place like the pre cider kind of event take place on January 31st. It's a Tuesday. So fly in or drive in on Monday, the 30th, get landed, get your hotel reservations now because you are guaranteed to find out if you delay that the site is going to be sold out. It happens every single year, and I don't want to see you crying a river of cider. That's just that's just not not you. Just don't want to do that. <laughs> and the cider tours taking place this year are just fantastic. You know, I, I'm going on two cider tours, and the one that we're going to be speaking about next, and these are taking place on the 31st, 
CiderCon proper takes place February 1st through the 3rd. So I know there's a lot of dates there. Just look at that last week of January, first week of February. That's when you want to be in Chicago hanging out at Cider kind of doing all these events. So let's go next to this conversation with Ambrosia Borowski talking about an event where there are still tickets now for this Cider Tour. Let's go on to the one called Bronzeville. And this is with a TikToker who I follow called Dilla or Sherman Thomas, uh, nicknamed Dilla. This sounds a lot like the one that took place in Richmond last year that brought us to the Jackson Ward, where we got to go to Speakeasy. We got to see Black Wall Street. Do you know where Dilla's going to be bringing us on this? When I started helping out with planning all of these tours and the Cider Psalms said that they were going to be able to get Dilla, I lost it. I was so excited. Mm. This person is so dynamic. And if you don't follow them, please do. Uh, So dynamic, know so much about Chicago history. And Bronzeville has so many components to it that I'm going to be very excited to see where where Dilla takes us all. I know that we've been talking about a lot of new places that have been opening up. I think it recently just got a a new winery uh, in Bronzeville. Um, So I'm not exactly sure. And Even if I was, I would like to leave that Mm. as an ellipsis for folks to find out because this is the tour that I am pretty excited about. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Dilla is like super famous on TikTok, which is a social media channel. How about the Cider Psalms? Can you tell us a little bit about them? These are folks who are like influencers, bloggers all about cider based in Chicago. Yes. Sean and Malika are based in Chicago and they are some more of your awesome Cider Friend ambassadors that you'll be able to see in throughout Chicago Cider Week. They've been a crucial part to uh, every Chicago Cider Week that I've had and a crucial part to Cider Con in general with all of what they do. Mm -hmm. And I understand that um, an extra bonus for those of us who are on this tour, and I am signed up for this tour, lunch isn't included, but you can hang out and go out to lunch with the Cider Psalms, you know, and see what they're, you know, picking and choosing. So what's not to love about that? I mean, you know, that before CiderCon kicks off and get to go and get a sense of Chicago in a place, I think that's so savvy for producers to do. You know, not just, you know, we're going to be drinking cider all week, but the element of going to learn about neighborhoods, to learn about history, I think really informs me as someone who leads totally cider tours internationally. But also if I was a cider producer, it would really inform me one on how to introduce people to a tour on site. And also how do other people do tours? How do they highlight their region to get folks, you know, jazzed up to check it out. So I, I, I'm stoked that you have hooked this all up and what you're doing with Chicago week and this particular tour here called Bronzeville. So let me just put another reminder here to everyone listening. If you're headed to CiderCon and you want to go on a tour, sign up now for the Bronzeville tour by going to ciderassociation.org. Also in February is the New York International Cider Competition, which is also a sponsor of Cider Chat. It's now in its fifth year. So let's roll to that conversation next. Hey, Rhea. It's Adam Levy, the alcohol professor. How are you doing today? Adam, when is the 2023 New York International Cider Competition taking place this coming year? We're excited to be holding the uh, New York International Cider Competition, our fifth year, uh, in the New York metropolitan area. Uh, um, February 19th, we're going to start. They will be delivered to the judges, who are all trade buyers, to their home and business to be judged. And they're already excited, and they're thirsty, and they're waiting for these samples because they love this competition. And when do uh, submissions need to be sent in? Is there like a, a, a mark date that they shouldn't be sending it in any later than? Early is always better for us, and my staff appreciates that. Uh, but we know that's reality, uh, so we like to get them in by February 17th, the latest. Uh, the best thing to do is get them to the system, so when they do arrive, we just tag them and panel them so they're ready to go. But uh, the 17th is the deadline, uh, the 19th is the competition. Sooner is always better for us. And what is a website that they go to? You can find more information about the cider competition at nyicidercompetition.com. Uh, again, it's www.nyi, Nancy Yellow India, ciderCompetition.com. 
Well, 2023 is coming in strong already. We have CiderCon and the New York International Cider Competition all taking place right in those first two months of the new year. Not to mention all the WAS sales that are going to be taking place all over the world. And if you want to hear a little bit about WAS sales and how to set up a WAS sale, I'm going to refer you to a podcast recorded last year with my dear friend Al Sachs all about hosting a wassail and some of the things to consider. So if you want to hear that, go into the show notes for this year, episode 348 at ciderchat.com. And you're going to be noticing that, you know, the website looks a little bit different because yes, I'm working behind the scenes when I can to update the website. So that'll be a little bit of excitement too, coming up for 2023. Jeez, you know, talk about a full glass. Up next is our featured conversation with both Bill and Pauline Storm of Storm Ranch Cider and Wine, based in Julian, California. Now, last week's episode, I was at Calico Cidery, also in Julian, and that gave you a sense of the ride up the hill from San Diego proper, that San Diego County area where you're in like a low desert, and then going up to an altitude of, well, at Calico, it's like 32. Two or 3,800 feet, I should say. And then Julian proper is 4,200 feet. And then you go to the flip side of Julian, like you're going to now head down to Anza Borrego State Park. It's not a national park. I always consider it a national park, you know, where the Salton Sea is. This this whole area is just outstanding. (laughs) I just want to like give you a sense of it because I just love the high desert. It has just everything that I enjoy. It has that dry heat, but it also can get snow. In fact, they had some snow, but you know, by like noon, it'll be gone. So no big deal, right? You know, they get to have that nice, what they call the farmer's fertilizer, which is snow, a little bit that of that on the ground to help irrigate the apple trees. And then it goes away and you kind of continue on with life. And you have this beautiful region. There's hiking nearby. I actually went out hiking nearby after I visited the cidery. I'll put links to where you could hike there. So you can make it like a day event. You could get some cider, cider to go, wine. You, you're going to hear all about it. This couple is just, they're just super friggin' cute. And in so many ways, I just love their dynamic and you're going to get a sense of them in this conversation. Also in this area, you know, there's not a ton of people. This is like an area of under 2000, but a lot of tourists coming through. So there's a, a real local feeling like once you're in that hub and I got introduced to that hub at Calico and of course they're they're good friends with Storm so wouldn't you know the bartender Eric is both at Calico and then the next morning after we had a very late night at Calico I went over to Storm and who was there Eric again so that was pretty cool and then behind the bar also was their daughter Hannah this is Bill and Pauline's daughter Hannah they have a son and a daughter Hannah and Kyle and part of that inspiration for having this cidery is because of their son Kyle so we'll hear about that and just I just love this area what can I say all right so and I love these people I think you're going to find them super adorable too so make sure that you grab a glass to get into this chat with Pauline and Bill Storm of Storm Ranch Cider and Wine in Julian California we're up in Julian, which is like 4,000 feet, elevation, high desert, hard packed soil, a certain kind of rock, I imagine. Granite. Granite, okay, which is perfect for both wine and, or grapes, I should say, and apples. You had this dream to start your cidery in 2013, and here we are in 2022. Let's talk about that, because I think that alone is a great way to kind of kick off the conversation. It all started when uh, Pauline received orders from Virginia back to California. And we uh, met in Coronado and she was getting her final set of orders in Coronado. And I called her and she was halfway across Texas and I told her to go and look for Apple property in Julia. Yeah, so what Bill didn't say is I was 
I was in the Navy for 20 some odd years and Bill followed me around. And literally, as I was heading to San Diego for that last set of orders, he called and said, we're gonna get a place in Julian. And so in 2010, we ended up purchasing the initial property. Um, Bill's thought was that apples would be a fun family activity. We have a, <laughs> our youngest is um, autistic and intellectually disabled and his first word was ball. And what Bill knew about growing apples was that apples are round. Kyle will like this. Kyle has no desire to do anything outdoors, but Bill loves his apples almost as much or more than his children. So we ended up... They are my children. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so we ended up purchasing this property, starting to rehab the orchard to bring the trees back to life. Um, I retired in 2013, and that's when Bill opened the Julian Apple Stand. And after one season, he determined that doing a seasonal farm stand is a lot of hard work and wouldn't it be more fun just to pick them ferment them and drink them and thus began the dream of a cidery <laughs> yes yes <laughs> well done wow that's quite a path i mean um you mentioned that you had to like get a second property though is that where, where does that fall into suit here well yeah. the first property we bought uh we uh, went ahead put the deposit down started working with a county and we had approval and then we had to get some more county approvals and then the county said no you have high water so we had to put test wells in what bill did not explain was that on the initial property when he started his <laughs> dream of a cidery we started looking on the property for a site that the county would approve while that process was taking place bill got a little ahead of himself put a deposit on the steel building that we're in now and as we were going through the process with the county they would not approve any of the sites where we wanted to have the cidery then we got really lucky the adjacent property came available and we were able to purchase that and then our first shot on a location for the cidery the county approved and that was in 2019 and so yeah. we began to finalize plans work with the county with a lot of roadblocks trying to get the building built and approved and just as we were getting ready to start construction COVID hit, mm -hmm. which was actually a blessing in disguise because mm -hmm. I feel like it gave us a lot more time to really think through mm -hmm. how to do the building, how we were going to use it. Um, and so we were able to start building in the summer of 2020 and opened the tasting room last year in November of 2021. Congratulations. Thank and you. it is beautiful. Thank you. It's really beautiful. You're about maybe uh, eight minute drive out of the center of Julian mm -hmm. on Main Street. You go down that beautiful, just a stunning ride. I mean, everywhere around here is stunning wherever you look. And then we're on a slanted hill here. This taste room is, what kind of building is this? Just to so, give people the dimensions and stuff if you know. It's uh, 81 by 36. Yeah, it's a steel frame construction. Mm -hmm. um, it is our production facility and tasting room so most of the business is in the back with all of our flex tanks and pumps and stainless stuff steel. um we have flex tanks stainless steel we have some barrels we have a few um smaller barrels where we're making some apple brandy we've got a big walk-in cooler so we can do cold crashing as necessary and then the upper front of the tasting room up front of the building is the tasting room itself mm -hmm. where we we sell wines made in san diego county and exclusively with the apples that we grow on the property we make hard cider we ferment to dry we let the apples shine through um yeah they're pretty delicious i like them and then we also sell some um premium balsamic vinegars and olive oils i saw that yeah. so that we, yeah. we feel like we have a little something for everyone yeah. There are two wineries nearby, so we're able to get people who are looking for another winery to try. And it's kind of fun because we can usually kind of hook them into trying cider for mm -hmm. the first time. Mm -hmm. So we'll do whatever it takes to get them in. But Julian's known for the apples, so we've got that going on. And, you know, if you're just not drinking for whatever reason, the balsamic vinegars make a really fun shrub. It's basically like a grown-up soda without the chemicals. Mm-hmm. Now your apples here, you have some really nice varieties there. And I understand that it's all, uh, it's not a standard tree, it's all high density. Is that true? Like the orchard house planted? Kind of or? mid density, high density. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some is five by 
12 other plantings are 3 by 10, which are, is our high, high density. And then we do have certain freestanding, depending on the topography of where they're planted, and the soils. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm getting you know, older, I don't want to do ladders, so, you know, I, I like okay. to keep them, you know, high density. and Accessible, yeah, yeah. really key. And you're doing a lot of single varietal ciders. Uh, let's talk about that. Uh, is there a reason why you're doing the single varietal versus blends? You probably do both, right? Or is it we do both. both we do yeah. both. I, I like to see what each t apple tastes like, and then you can really tell the uh, the vin vintages from year to year. Mm -hmm. Like this year was extremely hot. Um, you know, stranger altogether. We started off with two freezes, one at the end of April, one at the beginning of May, 24 degrees, six hours. So we lost about 70% of our crop. Mm -hmm. And then um, about a month ago, we had uh, Hurricane K. Remnants K yeah. came through, mm -hmm. and we had 96 mile an hour winds, and so we lost wow. the other half. You don't see that half. up in Julian, do you? Not, no, no, no. We you spent don't. a long time on the East Coast, and yeah. I was really happy to come back to just worry about the occasional earthquake right. instead of the continual threat of hurricanes. So yeah. who knows what's happening with our climate. <laughs> did, you, did you actually get the, a hailstorm yesterday? We, uh, we didn't. I didn't look outside. I know we had really heavy rain. I don't know that we had actual hail at our location, yeah. but I know just over the hill yeah. in downtown yeah. Julian proper that yeah. there was pretty significant hail. Heavy rain yeah. and yeah. hail. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. crazy weather this year. I know. Yeah. yeah, so it'll be really interesting with what we were able to harvest to compare it to previous year's vintages because sure. that single apple varietal, it's so fun because, mm -hmm. you know, most people just do not realize how many varieties of apples there are. And so like if you go to a winery, you can compare your Chardonnays mm -hmm. from year to year. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to come in, mm -hmm. so right now um, we have a Harrison Camfield blend. You can compare the 2018 and the 2019. Same apples grown in the same location mm -hmm. in terroir, same fermentation styles, mm -hmm. two completely different ciders. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's really fun to explore that mm -hmm. and kind of open up folks to really how versatile and how amazing the apple is. Right. We're going to be doing more blends this year because of the uh, significant uh, loss of crop. So instead of doing a straight Wixen and a straight Hughes Virginia crab, we're going to do something called the Virginia California crab. You know, <laughs> like because it. Hughes is from Virginia. Yeah. Uh, Wixen is uh, Albert Etter, California apple. So we're going to see how that goes. Our golden russets are going to be blended with some goldens and our gold rush to make our apple wine. So this year, more blends, less single varietals, but following year, Who single knows? varietals. Yeah. See what Mother Nature gives us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but when I you know I, when I we do a single varietal, you know I've done research across, you know, in Europe and you know the U.S. on what varieties are used as single varietals. I mean, I go from Kingston Black, Golden, Rus Golden uh, Russet, yeah. uh, Roxbury Russet, Newtown Pippin, uh, Arkansas Black. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna do a, a single Dabinet. Our Dabinets, because they bloomed, you know, they're in pollination group six, a very late bloom bloomer, full crop. Fantastic, good for you. So we're going to do That's an individual great. dabinet. We usually wow. blend that with a red field yeah. in honor of uh, West County Cider, which came up with that uh, combination, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Nice. A little bit of my special spot is Ciderville there. I love that. That's beautiful. I, I'll tell Judith Maloney that. Bill, how did you get so smitten with orchards and apples? You ha had this dream for some reason. Was this something from childhood or...? Well, it started in high school, uh, wow. up in the Bay Area. Uh, you know, there's places called Blossom Valley, you know, Prune Ridge. There's a reason why they were named that. Even though there's no more orchards, it's all Silicon Valley houses, you know, freeways. Uh, I worked uh, for a uh, lady uh, who had a uh, small orchard in back. She had a larger orchard, but was sold off in parcels mm -hmm. over the years. So. 
um, you know, when her husband passed away, she needed somebody to take care of the trees. And so for three years, I just, you know, did what I was told. Okay, Bill, could you do this? Could you do this? Could you climb up the ladder? I said, yeah, can I wear my motorcycle helmet? <laughs> Probably a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. uh, so that's how I became interested. And then I was thinking, you know, with our son, you know, what could we do? long term I see. and he's okay. six foot eight so he has a good reach and he likes round objects and <laughs> just, just not outside <laughs> just not outside so anyway and then I did the retail uh, side because uh, I had Ray Meyer who I met who was doing retail wholesale apples since 1963 up here okay so yeah. Ray kind of yeah. trained me to be a mini Ray and wow. it was a lot of work, you know, three, four thousand boxes, packing them, you know, carrying them. I mean, we didn't use bins. We used, you know, just the old regular field boxes. My goodness. Uh, so, yes, the cider was a much more elegant way to go. Uh, you know, we had Julian Hard Cider uh, mm -hmm. up here. I mean, mm -hmm. it, and so I had talked to Paul and he was saying, hey, I should probably go ahead and do more of the traditional ciders. There you go. Yeah, and you are. It's kind of nice. There's like three cideries now yeah. in, in this region, and you're all uniquely different, which is the beauty of cider, isn't it? Yes. It's part of the personality, part of where you are, and part of the goal of the individual you know, production team. Now, you have a, a cider maker. You're, are you kind of guiding the cider maker, and can we give a shout out to the cider maker? Well, our, our winemaker, cider maker, is Nate Marsh, um, and he's been very he had never really done cider before and so he's been very open-minded and is really enjoying the cider side of things i think also enjoying a lot of the cider community mm. which tends more towards like the craft beer a lot more collaborative working together um, which we really enjoy um, it's part of the like and especially the community up here so working with ian and dave at calico is great they let us come and press on their press equipment, which is a huge, huge help. That's and so we, we share some of our staff with them when they need it because it's, you know, I think a, a rising tide floats all boats. Oh. And so the more we, interest we can get into the community up here, the better it is for all the cider makers. Yeah, absolutely. So Nate um, is going to be setting up his own uh, winery cidery. So what um, he's going to be doing that next year but he is planting apples, and so we've got him hooked. We know that because he already has so. wow. five acres of grapes. He's looking at three acres of apples, and so, uh, you know, so I'm happy to have another cidery. The people we sold the upper property to, they have a thousand trees, and he's looking into cider, so. Wow. Wow, that's very good news for yeah. a, a town that you come into, and everywhere you see is apples. It's just... For myself, it just gives me complete joy, you know. I'm just like stopping everywhere, and orchard here, orchard there on the sides, and you know, it's so it's so cool. But you're doing single varietal and blends. You have a high bricks here, right, because of the dry, dry climate, and so you get a lot of sugar in the apple. What's the lowest ABV cider, and can you actually classify it as cider when you're, you know, what makes it like become a wine versus a cider in your mind? Well, our lowest is our summer uh, blend because those are early apples which are naturally lower in bricks so uh, that's 7.5 ABV mm -hmm. and uh, our um, our highest is the 2019 golden russet and that's at 12.5 ABV mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because Bill decided to see, hey, how high will those bricks go if I leave those apples on the tree until they're really fully ripe? And that's what happens with the incessant San Diego sunshine. Mm. You get a lot of sugar. But, I mean, fruit wines and ciders are all, they're all that same classification on the legal side, apart from, like, the different, like, taxation levels. But Right. Yeah. And so the difference for us between a cider... A cider is all the natural sugars that are used to ferment, no added sugars. Our apple wines, we add sugar to, mm -hmm. to get the uh, uh, bricks up to 11.5, 12%. So in my mind, the difference is uh, using 
you know, cider is no sugar no added. Sugar. And then uh, with the apple uh, wine, which is right here, this is a uh, tote of Golden Delicious and Golden Russets and some Liberties. So we added 50 pounds to 175 gallons. So the uh, bricks were about 16 and we're getting it up to about 20. Okay. And then what yeast were you using? A Chardonnay yeast on that one? Chardonnay, mm -hmm. yeah. Chardonnay yeast. The batch we made last year plays really like a very dry white wine with just a hint of fruit. Can I go and grab one? If you want to. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to try some cider. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. I put apple it on wine. a... Oh, apple wine. Sorry. Okay. I put it on yes. a tasting board yeah. without telling... So for a couple of our regular customers, they were looking at some wines with some friends of theirs, and so I popped it on as the first on our paddle of four, and they took a sip, and they were like, this is the most delicious wine I've ever had. It's light, and it's crisp. It's just a little bit of fruity, like, apple to it. And I'm like, yes, because it is an apple wine. <laughs> and their minds were blown. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing beats a good apple wine. I'll tell you, I've made yeah. it myself, and they, they could be super delightful. Yeah. Uh, they are not Boone's Farm apple. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, that, that was a different experience. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So... Primarily, you're having Chardonnay as your yeast. Yep. The house yeast. Yeah. For the for the wine products. For okay. our other ciders, we're just going with wild yeast fermentation. Wild yeast fermentation. Okay. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers to your health. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's tank back so to I, I could totally taste your, the Chardonnay yeast. Yeah. 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 You know, just because that's just how much I drink. <laughs> <laughs> I was name it myself. Years, then. I, I, I drink a lot, but I, I don't have the. I'm still developing my palate. I, guess. I, I think I have a little bit over 20 years, um, and and have made it with the Chardonnay. Ah, yeah, yeast. Yeah. I have. You know. I mean, that's the beauty of working with apples. You could throw in any yeast you want, based yeah. on the profile that you want. But it, you know, for Chardonnay yeast, it's not really dried out as yeah. I. I expected. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, so, yeah, a lot of residual sweetness there, which is the fruit, you know, yeah, pronouncing yeah. itself. Uh, okay, Bill's walking over with another glass of something. 19 Gold Rush. 2019 Gold Rush. Okay, so this is a nice chilled Gold Rush. Nice clarity in it. There's not really much. It's, it's quite uh, a, a beautiful, light, golden, clear mm -hmm. straw color. Nice aroma, nice bouquet coming up. Tart, very bouncy on the tongue. Mmm. Nice finish, nice astringency, which is like perfect for a gold rush. Such a lovely apple to work with. It really loves being in the the cider category. So on here, this is an unbelievable 10.5% ABV. <laughs> This is like a double uh, imperial cider here. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I would call it. What is 10.5% is an imperial cider, yeah. which was only a matter of time. And maybe that's what this region of California is all about, that you make um, imperial ciders, which is not a bad thing. I mean, think about it. Like, you know, a, a standard cider is a, a bit low on this, but this is really shooting it up there. And yet you drink it and you wouldn't, it's so smooth. You wouldn't know that the alcohol is yeah. there. Not at all. I try to pick it early, and I just don't pick it early enough. But it, yeah, but you're you're getting it probably at that prime time, and why not make what you have, you know, and mm -hmm. work with that? I mean, that's honorable. And if this is what you're getting, maybe at some point you'll start keeving, and then you could kind of stop fermentation earlier. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's one way to like lower the alcohol. Um, that's perhaps down the road, but wow. So it says, a modern dual-purpose apple developed at Purdue University, 1970s. I love how you have this as informative for the folks here. Citrus notes of lemon and grapefruit and sprightly, uh, sprightly acidity and light tannins. Yeah, it has a real, like, bounce right on the tongue. As soon as you go, it's, like, right there. Lovely bouquet. I mean, really lovely bouquet. I'm getting a little bit of barrel on there, but that's maybe I'm just a barrel head. I don't know. <laughs> It was a late night last night. Uh, <laughs> blame it on that. No off flavors. 
delicious. You're getting that gold rush, like, you know, it's a real formidable apple, I think, in the cider community. People are really taking it on more and more. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen folks like Tom Oliver working with Gold Rush and doing collaborations, and then more and more people are using Gold Rush, and there's a good reason why. It's a perfect cider apple. That's why I planted 150 trees. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Everybody, oop, everybody's listening right now and going, you lucky dog, you. Yeah. This is the uh, 2020. Okay. Okay. So we have 19, 20, yeah. and that's both wild yeast. And both wild yeast, I know. So we're going to have the terroir. So let's put this one down here. 2019. 2019, 2019. 2020. 2020, what a heck of a year. What, yeah. what was uh, that was dry here, super dry? or? Yes, this is usually outside. It's all brown, but with the uh, five inches of rain a month ago and these little storms were, it's all green. I feel like I'm back on the East Coast. Yeah. So you get a little bit of like that, um, the lactic, you know, it's a um, mm. uh, nice umami uh, for your mouth, which I like. Mm. Do you do uh, malolactic fermentation at all? Is that happening? Well, it's 2020, so it's been, you know, in a uh, high density flex tank. For a little, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So there it goes. I mean, I like that myself. I'm, I'm, I kind of favor that. Because I'm not a real, uh, I'm not super partial to high acidity, so I like it to kind of be cut back a mm -hmm. little bit for my own pH. Um, so there's a real big difference here in that, you know, yes. because it's been aging, and how cool that you have that that yeah. difference. Yeah. yeah. Ten point ten, ten point five. I mean. Yes. It's a ten ten. Yes. It's a ten ten. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Really nice. Really nice. Yeah. Again, you wouldn't expect that it's such a high ABV, which I think is kudos, big kudos, you know. Well, you're not coming anything hot or anything. Yeah, I check yeah. the apples, and so, you know, if there's any uh, starch left, I leave them on the tree. Uh -huh. But then you also have to, not only do you have to just test the bricks, test the starch, you have to eat the apple because it has to have that mature flavor, the mature yeah. flavor of a Fuji you know, of mm -hmm. a uh, gold rush, you know, until that happens, you know, I just leave it on the tree. Yeah. And then I pick three times because apples don't ripen evenly. Mm -hmm. So I pick the south side size and color first. I irrigate right after mm -hmm. because that dilutes the sugars in the fruit. Mm -hmm. And I wait seven to ten days to do another picking size and color. I irrigate because again dilutes the sugar and then I pick the final picking either seven to two weeks later then I strip pick so you know I did this for my clients because they had drive all the way from Arizona or LA to buy my apples because they were very sweet they're mm -hmm. high quality they tasted like an apple supposed to taste yes. Yes. so that takes time fortunately my OCD works in my favor yeah, it does. <laughs> Cheers to that. I mean, that's what makes a difference between an orchard-based cidery and one that's bringing in the juice. I mean, you are out there. You know your orchard, mm -hmm. and you could drink that in your glass. I mean, we really get that. The fact that you're able to, like, pick it at that prime time, you're so focused. I could tell your passion is there 100%. I mean, it is popping out of the glass in that way. And and I'm excited. I mean, you, you're a new cidery, so... Boy, you know, now I have to come back to Julian. I Yay. can't, like, make an excuse not come back in a couple of years. Not that I don't dig this place. I'll tell you, this is like, you know, I, I, you know, somebody asked me if I was a local. You know, what can I say? So, you know, I could fit in. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's key. And now the final is our 2021 oh. Gold Rush with Chardonnay yeast. Chardonnay yeast. Okay, Less 2020 Gold Rush with Chardonnay. But don't, these were wild. You These were wild. wild. This was this Chardonnay. Chardonnay. It's 2021. Okay. All right. Let's try this. Okay. It's interesting. The clarity on the wild yeast, you have more clarity the versus the Chardonnay. Yeah. Well, these were uh, filtered. We have filtered. Okay. You haven't filtered that. Okay. Yeah. Not that you have to. I was just kind of curious yeah. about that. So there we go. We got that 
Sharon the yeast right on the nose. Which is kind of leading the, the apple. Like here mm-hmm. on your wild, it's really your gold rush is popping. Yeah. Here, your, your yeast is right. It's really defining it and trying to say, hey, become a Chardonnay. <laughs> right? I mean, this is, what, this is the smell you would get in a Chardonnay in a glass, is that, yeah. that yeast, yeah. that profile. Smooth, clean. Um, it is like a glass of Chardonnay. It just kind of yes. like brings you into this like experience, like a wine, which I'm sure... The higher would, ABV helps. The higher ABV, and wow, wouldn't that pair well with food? Mm-hmm. Some nice white fish, you know. Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah. You, you, you got like this whole cacophony of opportunity here. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's. I could tell that you're kind of getting settled into you know the yeah. kind of the post-COVID thing, getting an understanding of it, and then you're working with somebody who is kind of like approaching cider as wine and I imagine when you're seeing what you're doing with your wild your, your terroir here is incredible mm-hmm. I mean you know you have that sort yeah. of minerality in it yeah. and dang you kind of wonder like why you even use any kind of yeast at all yeah. it's so darn clean you know yes boys played a lot last year oh, <laughs> they oh, were kids in fantastic. a candy shop let's do this let's try that yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. This have, year they're a little more measured and like yeah. trying we to focus. We have less fruit, so we have to be very careful with what we have. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's hopefully that won't last forever. I mean, you know, to speak really frank with you, I think the Chardonnay is taking away from your apples. Yeah. What I look for in a glass is, is like the apple, mm-hmm. and then it's carrying whatever additives you put in, whether it's a yeast or a fruit. Mm-hmm. And here, it's a yeast that's really carrying this glass. I mean, it's right. delicious. I would freaking love it with food and all that. But I'm getting the, the too, too, in my mind, too much of the Chardonnay yeast. Right. Well, our largest uh, client who buys uh, two kegs, and he's also, also buying 200 gallons for his apple beer, uh, comes in and his profile, his taste preference is more wine. He's the beer maker over there. Uh-huh. So, you know... That so what I was, yeah, yeah. So I was because we do enough uh, volume. I was going to play with you know Chardonnay and wild, you know, mm-hmm. same apples. Mm-hmm. You know, and, yeah. You know. I mean, this is it's really magnificent. I mean, no no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. And if you're a wine drinker, you're going to love this. I mean, I right. take a lot. I taste a lot of spirits that are made with apples mm-hmm. instead of grapes, right? A gin mm-hmm. made with apple base, um, vodkas made with apples. And that's awesome, you know. It you're not really looking for the apples in the same way, and in this glass, I'm not either. I mean, mm-hmm. I can imagine a wine drinker would love that. Well, we are a winery too. You are. A winery. <laughs> you are yeah, wine. <laughs> yeah, you got it going on. Let's just talk a little bit about like the future of what 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 is like your five year plan? Starting to do some bottling. Bottling. Yeah, we need okay. to bottle our cider. So right yeah. now. You have to come in, and you can take a growler to go. Not a bad um, thing. Yeah. But getting getting product bottled so mm-hmm. that we have a, a good inventory and starting the Cider Club, uh-huh. which is going to be bottles and figuring out software and shipping and that yeah. stuff. and All that jazz. Yeah, yeah. So many things to learn in a new business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it certainly is. It certainly is. And I'm rather excited because we just planted this. This is a new orchard. So I planted 1,500 trees. I had planted 2,000 trees up in orchard number one. which, But this one, uh, I really understood you know, what apples did well. I did a lot of uh, experimentation up mm-hmm. on the upper orchard. And so the apples that were, you know, that like Julian, you know, and I planted. So we're going to be getting more production. Uh-huh. I'll do a, a single wine sap. Mm. Uh, I'll do uh, That's increase exciting. my northern spy. I got some Franklin cider apples. I'm waiting to see oh, how whoa, they do. Oh, wow. Okay. The coveted patent Franklin tree. Right? Yeah, I was yeah. able to get it from my buddy. Uh, at Vanwell Nursery. Very good. Okay. So, and then well, uh, Smith Cider, and then Porter's Perfection. 
I, I want to try out all these new single varietals. That's what I'm looking for when I get enough to start making. All right, everybody, start you know putting together your frequent flyer miles. It's a really beautiful drive from San Diego. You won't be disappointed. Plenty of places to stay in Julian. This tasting room is open year-round. Yep, we are yeah. open year-round, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 to 5. I think we're closed this year on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, well, you deserve a break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and there's outside seating and yep. um, beautiful, you know, overlooking on the hill. It's sunny out. It's beautiful. California yeah, you high You can't desert. beat Julian's weather. Yeah. We have all four seasons. Um, it's not that cold in the winter. It snows once or twice, um, but you get that nice crispness. You get the beautiful blooms in the spring. The summer is hot, but we keep the tasting room at a nice steady 62 degrees mm -hmm. for the production side. Um, so it's lovely anytime. Well, what I like to do is uh, in January, we get some, uh, you know, short sleeve weather days, you know, just taking pictures of me pruning, mm -hmm. you know, in the orchard, sending them to uh, folks we know in New York. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my God, that's the way my brothers, they say, hey, I'm, I'm picking off the orange tree right now, Reed, while I'm out in Massachusetts. Well, you guys are adorable. I really appreciate your time. Oh, I know it's going to be a busy weekend and, you know, Let's stay in touch on what you're doing here because yeah. this is this is really all about cider going up here, and I feel it 100. percent Thank you. Thanks Thank for making you. the time to come see us. My Thank pleasure. You. Really appreciate pleasure it. Meeting you. Yeah. I know you're an Apple and Cider fan, so I hope you do put Julian California on your to-do list. A must-stay. Spend the night and plan accordingly. Right now, you have three cideries with a fourth one coming up on the line, as you heard in this chat with both Pauline and Bill Storm. And didn't I say they were going to be really cute? <laughs> yep, they did deliver. So we have Storm, Ranch Cider and Wine, Calico Cidery, Julian Hart Cider and that up and coming cidery too. And maybe there's something else in the hopper that I don't yet know about. What's also cool is you could stay right in Julian proper. There's a lot of little hotels to pick. There's lots of eateries, lots of places that make apple pie. And yes, you could buy some of the hard cider in the stores in town. But for Calico and Storm Ranch, you want to go and visit the cideries and get their cider, wine, and in Storm Ranch case, cider, wine, vinegar, and olive oil. You could get all those to go. And there's so much hiking right around the corner from Storm Ranch. Well, they are, they actually, the orchard is flanking Vulcan Mountain. And the trailhead's about two minutes up the road. It's a one hour hike. You get to the top, you want to make sure you're bringing layers because the lower level could be kind of warm. Then you get up, it could be very chilly. So watch out for that hypothermia. Then right up the road is another little trailhead with picnic tables under the shade, porta potties, and just a stunning view. A nice place to have a picnic with some cider. I actually brought some sushi along. So I was drinking cider and hanging out under the picnic table up there. You can find all the links in the show notes to this here episode 348 of Cider Chat. And kudos once again to Bill and Pauline. How inspirational was that? I just love how they got inspiration from their son Kyle's affection for balls and all things round and Bill's early years in the orchard and how that really informed him later in life, bringing them full circle back. Definitely another reason to put Julian California on your cider mat and tell them when you visit Cider Chat sent you. Kind of feel like saying yeehaw after all that, but I'll just wait to the end of this here episode. In the meanwhile, I want to make a little reminder here for all you listening who are thinking about submitting your cider into the New York International Cider Competition. Now, this is for commercial cider makers only. And do know that there is a $10 off a promo code. You just go to nyiciderCompetition.com and put in chat 23 for $10 off your submission. 
Are you thinking about making cider? You know, getting a little bit of the itch to try your hand at it? Do it. Just absolutely do it. Don't hesitate. You can make one gallon batches and just put it in your refrigerator and see how it goes. Start learning the techniques of fermentation. There's lots of archived episodes at ciderchat.com on cider making from really beginner cider making all the way to advance. You just have to go through 350 episodes. And uh, one of my goals in updating the website will be to make that search a little bit easier for you. But in the meanwhile, don't be shy. And you could always send some questions my way. And if I could help you, I will. And one of the ways you can help this podcast in return is by becoming a patron of Cider Chat. Go to the Cider Chat Patreon page and join at any one of the levels or set your own terms of what is doable. Because if you're getting value from this podcast, well, I'd like to keep on bringing it to you. Join the Cider Chat Patreon page or hit the donate button at ciderchat.com. And with that, I leave you here. This is a Real Wind Caller signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. Strange apples, bitter sharp. Strange apples, juicy and ripe. Who wants a tannin bomb? I want a tannin bomb. Who wants to pull them down? I'm gonna pull them down. Hey, 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 apples. Bittersweet. Strange apples. Hanging high. Got them strange apples. Forget the pie. Strange apples. Squeeze them tight. Got them strange apples. Strange apples. Strange apples. Make them pop. I want a tan and ball. Who wants to pull them down? I'm gonna pull them down. Hey, 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 hey apples. Come and see. Plenty strange apples for you and me. Strange apples. Strange apples.